Welcome to Guile and Friends, the podcast where you hang out with game devs and hear about our pixelated shenanigans. I'm your host, uh, Chris Bergman, founder and CEO of Guile Games. I remember my name. Uh, and with me, not as always, but a very welcome addition, Ryan Rosano, art director and today's co-host. Substitute Kim. Substitute Kim. Are you going to bully me as much as she does? I don't think I can, but I'll give it my best shot. Can we just talk about how she is the office bully now that she's not here? <laughs> we talk about it when she is here. <laughs> but she argues it. This is an open secret. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, we got a great guest today. Who is it? <laughs> You're doing great at this. <laughs> Joel Willis is a Cincinnati-based entrepreneur, content creator, and gaming expert. He is best known for founding The Dad, a popular media brand focused on humor and community for fathers. The brand quickly gained traction, amassing millions of followers globally, and creating a community of fathers who appreciate it a lighthearted or his lighthearted and humorous approach to parenting. Since then, he founded Channel 3, a gaming startup that provides a social media platform for gamers where participants can engage in tournaments, track rankings, and share highlights. Willis collaborates with local organizations such as the Cincinnati Recreation Commission to promote careers in gaming technology, particularly through initiatives like Esports Saturdays, which encourage young people to explore tech-related careers. Welcome, Joel Willis. Thank you, Chris, and well said. How are you? That's an amazing bio that you wrote. <laughs> that I wrote <laughs> totally good. off the top of my head. I'm Didn't use good. chat GPT at all. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Chris, and substitute Kim. Yeah. It's like, are we just going to call you that? I, I'm happy with that. Okay. Yeah. Off-brand Kim. It's off, <laughs> we, we have Kim that's at tough. home. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. We're happy you're here, man. Yeah. I was, I was listening to the pod this morning on okay. my morning run. Okay. But at 1.3x speed, so it's like... You're talking like a way too monk? slow now. <laughs> oh, right now. So if, you could, if you could just pick it up, because I feel like you're drunk or something. Like, <laughs> a little surreal. I feel like my voice is already kind of higher pitched, so I can't imagine at. at uh, you know, I don't know. If Spotify like equalizes that, but it did, oh, didn't sound bad. That's right. good. That's I'll good. take that. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, well, Joel, why don't you fill us in on your life story? Yeah, let's talk about my life story. Let's hear a little bit about um, how did you end up here. Sure, I was born born here. That's it. And okay, <laughs> podcast over. That's that story. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Now I kind of have an interesting background, like a um, weird mix of IT, business, social media, and gaming. Yeah. So I started in IT. I went to the University of Cincinnati for IT. Um, sort of like a safe pick, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll do the safe, boring thing. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I got a job at GE, and I worked at GE for 10 years, you know, leading data science initiatives for jet engine engineering. Right on. Um, so pretty mild stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, you basic, basic run the mill. No, it was cool. I, I appreciated my time at GE. Everybody there was pretty smart. Uh, work was good. Yeah. Um, but towards the end, I kind of uh, hated it. Like, How come? I don't know. Like— I don't want to disrespect corporate life because it is good for some people, and I respect that. For sure. But not for me. I don't know. Like, yeah, I had goals that I wanted to achieve. I wanted to get my MBA. I wanted to finish the leadership program. I wanted to become a manager. I did those things. Yeah. And I'm like, now what? You yeah. know, I didn't have fulfillment outside of those, like, extrinsic, extrinsic goals. And I'm like, yeah, I got to do something else. And, and then you get the life, It doesn't leave a lot of room for the individual. Like, if you, yeah. if you have a lot of space that you want to fill it with your own ideas, there's not a lot of that space offered, I feel like. Yeah, and I think may, certain jobs may allow for that. But, yeah, I was, like, creatively unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. Like, I would work for a year or two on, like, a project every day. And then it would get canceled because they'd cut the budget. <sighs> Brutal. And, would see, that was the thing. I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like, I didn't care. I'm like, that's terrible. I just yeah. <laughs> spent so much of my time on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, towards the end, I would be like in a conference room named like Productivity Excellence or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real thing. I was staring out the window and I saw a graveyard in the distance. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I got to make a change. I got to do something else. <laughs> so, yeah, that sparked the next, the next step. Which was then? Which was then. I'm like, I got to do something uh, more creatively fulfilling. And my wife... God bless her. She's like, you got to come up with a plan. You can't just quit your job. Sure. 
you know, and leave. So I came up with a five-year corporate escape plan. Love this. It was like— It's like an escape room, but for your life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Escaping from Productivity Excellence Conference Room overlooking the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, room, yeah. Right. Uh, it was like learn how to create content, um, get freelance gig, get a stable gig, these like year, year, yeah, year, yeah. right? Um, and then, you know, get a full-time salaried creative job, something yeah. out there, right? Sure. Um, yeah, and I think you mentioned this in the bio, um, but that led me to freelancing at places like Scary Mommy. Mm-hmm. So I wrote, I was moonlighting as a mom writer, basically, mm-hmm. <laughs> for Scary Mommy on nights and weekends. And people in my real life, like, didn't know I was doing that, but that was just, like, all part of this plan. Right, right, yeah. right, yeah. So you're doing that for a little bit, and, uh, and then what happens? So the Scary Mommy is owned by a parent company, no pun intended, but they wanted to create a dad <laughs> brand. <laughs> they wanted to create a dad brand and go with that mom brand. Yeah. And I was in the right place at the right time. Right on. Like, do you want to lead this thing? And I was in, like, year three of my corporate escape plan. Yeah. So it was, like, cheat code, like, yeah, Accelerate. and this was the salaried position doing something creative. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. On. Yeah, it was like it was like a dream dream yeah. job for me. Yeah, um, and it was headquartered in New York City, but I got to lead the team remotely from Cincinnati, so it was it was the greatest. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So you do that, you you grew it um, pretty hugely, right? Yeah, like uh, quite a few followers. Yeah, we had a couple. We had a few. Yeah, <laughs> no, we started at zero, and yeah. It, exceeded all of our expectations. Right on. And were you just like making memes this whole time? First of all, just making memes? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of memes, a lot of memes because we were a very scrappy team. Right. right. So we didn't have a huge content budget, so memes were a big part of it, sure. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, news articles as well, like good news stuff, yeah. ads doing good things in their community, stuff like that. Right on. Uh, personal essays, stuff like that. Mm. And we had a whole... Uh, 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 high-end video production team in New York City creating polished, like, professional quality video as well Mm -hmm. to live alongside. So, yeah, memes, articles, essays, stuff like that, Um, and then then the video. And then how long did you do that? So I did that for five years. Five years. And then somewhere along the way, I created the Dad Gaming, which was our gaming sub-brand as part of the Dad. But... um, yeah, we were acquired by a larger um, media conglomerate. Okay. Um, and I thought— As one does. It happens. <laughs> it happens. And I thought, this is great. We're going to get the priority we deserve. We're going to get uh, the budget that we've been asking for, all this stuff. And um, I was way off. Way <laughs> and it usually goes the other way when yeah. you uh, get acquired. That's what happened, yeah. yeah. So, it, I mean, it's tough times for digital media now, and it was then. So, it wasn't the case— and I decided that it was no longer the best fit for me. Sure. Creatively. So, yeah. So, I moved on. And uh, in moving on, did you know what you are going to do next? Or, like, how did that all transpire? Yeah. I mean, I had ideas. Um, I'm definitely a brainstormer. So, I had, like, lists of, like, you know, 30 potential ideas of okay. what to do next. And I'm doing this, like… Was, entrepreneur, like, was entrepreneurship… Like something that you wanted to pursue then? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. So most of these things were entrepreneurial ideas okay. as well. Right on. You may remember we had lunch yeah. at Summit Park. Yeah. And I was going through a few of those ideas with you yeah. at that time. Yeah. So that must have been before I left the right dad. On. And yeah. that was when I was in the thick of that process. Like, what am I going to do next? Yeah. I was prototyping and doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, know? well, reach out to entrepreneurs, man. That's the best way to learn. Yeah. Right yeah, on. Absolutely. So, okay, so you, and uh, this kind of ends, and then you know you, you have all these ideas for being an entrepreneur, and then uh, how did you land on Channel 3? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the dad gaming, before I left the dad, we started it, and it was um, basically like a gaming community. It was full of content and experiential type stuff. Uh, we hosted leagues and tournaments and all that stuff. We landed like a big sponsorship with Planters, for example. Mm -hmm. And we ran a different big monthly tournament for them each month. And we ran that thing through 
Facebook groups and Discord server and Twitch and, uh, you know, email signups to collect, like, registration and gamer tags and skill levels and lobby codes we had to send out through email, like, all this stuff. So Channel 3 was the thing that I wish existed when we were running the dad gaming, mm-hmm. but not limited to just to just dads or the dad community, obviously. Right. But it, I had personal experience in that. I'm like, this is the thing that I wish existed. I'm going to create this for the community that I want to see. And how do you describe Channel 3? So the easiest way to understand it is it's a social network for people who love video games. I always say that social network has like a certain amount of baggage these days. So <laughs> I hate using the term social network, but it's easiest to understand. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a place. Well, now that there's no fucking reason to be on Twitter, you know, Yeah. we need an alternative. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would, I would agree with that. I have, a, I have a lot of thoughts on that. The thing is, when I was uh, leading the dad, yeah. uh, anybody who works in social media professionally, like you see the worst parts of humanity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see the best parts of humanity, too. It's like I really believe that social media originally had benevolent intentions. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like, it changed my life, dude. Like, I, I mean, I remember... Yeah. Um, I mean, Twitter, I'm bashing Twitter now, but it's because an idiot bought it. <laughs> like, Twitter used to be my, it was the way I grew my entire career. It's how mm-hmm. I networked and, and yeah. how I met people and, you know, made same. friends and same, same. everything. Yep. Yeah, when I was getting that job at Scary Mommy, when I was doing that, there were writing, comedy writing groups and yeah. things that I was part of. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. All of it on Twitter, yeah. Exactly. It's so unfortunate that it got so bastardized mm-hmm. so quickly. Yeah, and Twitter's got its problems for sure. And then, yeah. But I think the others do as well. Well, yeah, like Facebook, yeah. Instagram. I mean, all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, given enough time, things become oversaturated. They become too toxic. They become inaccessible. There's all these barriers of entry. There's highly mon- monetized. Highly, yeah. the, the revenue models of these things are flawed, I feel. I feel, and we could talk about that too. But yeah, I was like... So yeah, so okay. So I, like, I do want to talk about that. How are yeah. you thinking about... So you build this social network... Right, and uh, or you start on this journey of building a social network, mm-hmm. and you've been doing that for how long now? I feel like it's been longer than I think it is. A little over two years. Okay, mm-hmm. right on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how has that journey been? Um, in a word, amazing. Like it's my the, my favorite job I've ever had. Yeah, like I'm really enjoying it, really yeah. loving it. Not stressful at all. <laughs> it's so stressful, <laughs> <laughs> immensely stressful. But to me, like, you know, like entrepreneurs thrive on that, right? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's so fulfilling. Sadly, we do. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little masochistic, but yeah, it's like tackling those stresses. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's very satisfying. Right on. But very stressful. Um, it's gone better than I imagined it would, mm-hmm. but it's gone a lot slower than I would have imagined for various reasons. Um, so, yeah, it's taken a while to get where we are, but I feel really good about it. So if I'm a new user on Channel 3, what what am I, like, why am I going to it? What am I experiencing once I get there? Mm-hmm. Why am I staying? Yeah, sure. So the first thing it asks you when you create an account is what are your favorite video games of all time? Right on. What's World your, of Warcraft. Okay. Ryan? I mean, that's definitely high on my list, too. I'd say that. Uh, Doom. Um, Original or 2016? All of them. 2016 has been the one I've been playing the most lately, but Doom was like... So I've told you this story before. My first exposure to gaming, period, was built on the Doom engine, but it was Chex Quest. Uh, The free free CD-ROM that came in Chex Serial. And I I loved it. I lost so much of my life to that. And then when I discovered that it was like... He didn't didn't grow up sheltered at all, guys. Oh, God, we could have a whole conversation about that. But when I discovered that it was like, oh, there's another whole thing that this is just like a little piece of. Like I saw the original yeah. Doom. Yeah. I fell in love with that. That's that's probably my favorite <laughs> franchise overall. That is amazing. Your <laughs> intro to Doom was the Chex Mix. It's great. Yep. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> so good. Just just asking you, 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 people light up when they answer that question. They yeah. love talking about their favorite video games of all time. Yeah. And, and, so, and it doesn't require Wait, fuck, you to we answer were it. supposed to say Rara Boom. Well, that too. Okay, Rara Boom. It's a right. given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think you can say rah rah boom on channel three. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I'm just you can't rate games that aren't released yet. Right on, yeah. So cool. anyway, people love answering that. Can I rate it? I can. I can do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, can make that happen. I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, you don't have to answer that question, but I see even like people who sign up and then leave. Yeah. 
we'll put like 20 games in there. They just type yeah. in all the games all day. I watch people do it in person and they just love it. And they'll just, you know, answer that. So that's the first thing. And you create uh, lists like Goodreads or Letterboxd, mm -hmm. um, but for video games. So you can use it as a game tracker. You can do that. And then that personalizes all the content that you're going to see on Channel 3, whether that's, you know, memes and clips and news and videos and all that stuff. But also like interactive quests and events and challenges and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because you have a bunch of tournaments and stuff in there too, right? We do, yeah. We have virtual tournaments and then we, we use it to outpost IRL tournaments as well. Right on. Um, but that's for like online competitive or competitive yeah. gamers or whatever. Yeah. It's meant to be whatever kind of games you like. Right. Right. You'll find some kind, kind of way to socialize your love of that game with, with other people. Right on. And um, also, we didn't talk about this beforehand, but if, if uh, anything comes up that you want to cut, we can cut it right after. Cause like, um, yeah, no. So far, so good. Because I have questions just because just I'm curious. So yeah, like, please. Uh, going back to like the downfall of social media, and now you're, you're kind of... Um, it's only because it feels kind of old school, honestly. Like like mm -hmm. the the website feels kind of old school and in a good way, like a, like an early web two point mm -hmm. kind of vibe. Like I agree. I agree with that. Uh, how like how are you monetizing the site or planning on monetizing the site, and how are you avoiding the traps that other social networks have made in the past? We'll start with the monetization because I feel like that leads to a lot of the traps that right. the, the uh, platforms face. Because they're targeted ad-driven, they're data collection-driven, which uh, requires engagement, engagement, engagement. So that becomes their number one priority. And certain types of content get more engagement. Yeah, um, stuff that fills you with rage, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that gets anything more that's baity. Yeah, baity stuff. Yeah, yeah engagement yeah, yeah. bait stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, from day one, we have a subscription model. So you can subscribe. You become a turbo member. Sure, that's a subscription. Five bucks a month, it gets you some additional features and things. Yeah. Um, but also, the entire platform is gamified. So, when you do stuff, you get XP. Right on. And then every thousand XP, you get a ticket and you redeem that ticket for prizes, like an old school arcade. Very cool. Some prizes you can only redeem for if you're turbo. Right on. So, people will be turbo so they can get prizes, but they'll also be turbo just to support the vision, support the platform. Yeah, so for sure. Mm -hmm. So, I would love for that to be the primary revenue model because it forces us to create something that people are willing to pay for. Right, right. right. Um, so that's ideal. We will have sponsorships, but they will be, you know, brand integrated sponsors with, uh, you know, like-minded mission and values, um, brands that provide value to our user base. Right on. So this season is sponsored by Way Forward. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Publisher. So they put games in our prize counter. Yeah, they did uh, River City Girls, right? Yeah, River City Girls. Awesome. Yeah. They have such a huge catalog. They've been yeah. around for a long time. Uh, River City Girls, yes, that's right. So they will they put games in the in the uh, prize counter and then you can redeem for those. those that's games. awesome. And yeah. then, you know, they're getting we're keeping track of all the impressions and stuff, so we are tracking that type yeah. of stuff, right? Yeah. Like any advertiser would. Um, but they're advertising to a very quality audience that like are already super fans of them just for Supporting right. the community, you know, right on. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, oh, we were talking about traps, though. Monetization. Yes. Uh, so, anytime you monetize based on on uh, targeted ads like that, um, it's going to lead to engagement bait and rage and all that kind of stuff. Right. And I think, and you're seeing it now with Meta. You're seeing it with with YouTube and all these other, uh, even Discord, but the subscription model. They're leaning into more and more. Yeah. And I guarantee the original founders of the platforms are like wishing they did that originally. Sure. Yeah. So it didn't completely destroy it mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Are you finding that people are willing to pay a subscription to be on a social network? So, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, like that we've never, we haven't fully shifted into growth mode. On right. Channel three. Yeah. So we have. You're still ironing out features and all that tons stuff. Tons of usability testing. Yeah. It's in the truest sense. There's people clapping outside for a, you. It's a political campaign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're clapping for me. That's good. Um, in the truest sense of the word, it's very community first. So we have like this community of super users that are yeah. like really into Channel three. Yeah. And the development work that we're doing now is responding to their 
requests and their bugs and usability requests, all that kind of stuff and building it for, for them. Right on. As we shift into growth and marketing mode, we'll expand the usability testing and we'll scale, we'll bring in clubs and groups and all this stuff and then it'll be a little bit different. But this audience, yes, we, we're finding that they will, are willing to subscribe. We have a little under 5,000 registered users. Right on. Um, we found that the subscription rate will be anywhere from 5 to 10%. That's incredible. That's a really good conversion rate. Oh, good. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> it feels nice. Because then, then, then you, you know, eventually as you scale, it becomes, you know, a math problem. Right, right. Of how much does it cost to acquire a user? How much revenue does each user produce? CAC versus LTV, as it were. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't going to, like flex the, the acronyms on your audience. <laughs> you're, aren't you the one with the MBA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, just talk, I'm talking for the lay person. Oh, okay. <laughs> just talk down to our, our audience, I see. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, that's, that's the vision, that's the goal. Right on, right on, very cool. And yeah, like to that end, I mean, as far as vision, like where do you, where do you see it in 10 years? Like what, what, do you, what do you hope to achieve by it being created and in the world? Yeah, I mean, I want it to be I want it to be massive. Like I, I don't think uh, it being a large platform precludes the vision of you know inclusivity and positivity. I think we can still maintain that. It'll definitely be a challenge. So the vision is definitely for it to be massive. How I mean to that massive. end, gamers aren't particularly inclusive or wholesome. They don't have the best reputation. Yeah. <laughs> how have you how have you sort of created a culture where that's the case? Yeah, I think our at this point it's a little more manageable because yeah. the audience is pretty small. Yeah, we model good behavior, you know, as as leaders and moderators, the other admins on the site. Yeah, um, the positivity is celebrated and encouraged, and people love it for that reason. Um, I think as it grows, curation will be key. Sure. Um, I think this, we could probably do a whole podcast on this debate of like curation versus the open town square type model of a social platform, which, yeah. you know, Twitter fire claims to try, to try to be and do, where it's like, you can say anything you want, like whatever. Yeah. Channel three, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll get ahead of that and say, you can't say anything that you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want it to be like the most curated social platform. Yeah. Right. I want to Do you have, not feel that that's oppressive for users or that users would feel oppressed by that? Like, where's that line? Well, th there's a bit of a trade-off because there's there's clubs on Channel 3. Yeah. And people manage their clubs. Okay. And then there's also, like, official Channel 3 events and content and stuff. Right. Which just even having that is a little different than other platforms because we have content that we create and produce. Right. We have events that we create and we produce as a platform. Right. And then we're also the platform that enables all these clubs to do their thing, right? Right on. So when I say like curated, I mean like um, for f certain features can help enable this. So for example, admins are able to anoint posts as the best of channel three. And those are given weight in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Those people get a bunch of extra XP, all this stuff, and those posts are sort of lifted to the top and celebrated. So we have the ability to say like this super positive post about like gaming, virtual gaming buddies meeting up in real life for the first time and like being best man in the way, like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Best of channel three and people see that. And then, and that's you modeling that behavior and, and showing, hey, this is what we want to be as a community. Exactly. Right on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So far, so good. I think it's, I think it's good. I mean, like I said, I've been in that world, so I know that there's challenges. Yeah. I'm I'm ready for him, <laughs> but it's just funny because you're like the most most wholesome dude I know, and uh, and so it makes a ton of sense that Channel Three would be the same. Yeah, um, hopefully not like wholesome in a bad way though. We want to. <laughs> What's wholesome in a bad way? I was wondering that myself. Yeah, I don't know. Like if um, Mr. Rogers had a platform, like I don't know that I'd want to. I'd be that. all about that, dude. I would be. That's yeah, like I'd one. be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. Feed a fish. Yeah. Um, 
Rai, do you have any questions for our guest before we head to break? Yeah, I was curious. The first time I heard you mention gaming in your uh, professional journey was you said you were managing some kind of like gaming dads like sub content under your under the the dads brand. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Was that something that you had kind of wanted to work your way around to the whole time? Like, was gaming something that was like baked into the the journey you wanted to have, or did it just sort of like lead into this? Or yeah, yeah, that? great question. Um, I was into into video games as a kid, uh, around high school, college. Play a lot of Chex Quest. <laughs> I was obsessed with Chex Quest Doom. Like, Doom, Doom Chex Quest. Well, I got to check if we have that in our library, um, Channel 3 library to rate. Um, around high school and college, I stopped playing video games. So okay. It was like a video game blind spot for me, right? Um, I didn't get back into video games until I had kids. And I bought them a Nintendo Switch oh, yeah. so that we could bond over video games. Which if you try to manufacture memories with your kids, it almost never works. Correct. Um, but this time it did. It was amazing. Nice. We played Breath of the Wild together. We beat the game. We explored, you know, all these worlds together. Very cool. They loved it. I loved it. Um, like, I honestly think, like, later in life, you know, they'll think back, like, what was the first video game you played? They'll have a great answer for it. They'll remember oh, yeah. that, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about to me. But I started playing Fortnite with my son. Nice. And I liked playing with him, the teamwork and communication, all this stuff. But I didn't like playing against the general public. Right. Um, you guys know how that goes. Yep. And I'm like, can we just do a Fortnite round where, like, all of these hundred people are, like, people we know? Like, like our community? Can we do that? Mm-hmm. And you can, you have to apply uh, for, for that role from Epic. Hmm. And I did, and they approved it. And I posted on the dad, I'm like, who wants to play Fortnite with us? Very cool. Um, and that was the start. It was just because I just wanted it. I wanted to do it. I just That's was awesome. passionate about it. Super cool. I, like, honestly, if I asked my bosses at the time, <laughs> can I start this thing? They might have said, like, no, like, yeah. focus on your other stuff. But we just did it. We just did Hell it. Yeah. Started Mario Kart League. Started doing Rocket League tournaments on Tuesdays. Like, all that stuff. Very yeah. cool. Ask for forgiveness instead of permission, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your boss. You too can become an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your boss I said. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, uh, on that note, why don't we take a quick break? And when we come back, we'll get into some shenanigans. Let's do it. All right. Sounds good. We'll be right back. Do you know what happens if you let them shenan once? I do. I do. What happens? They're going to probably shenan another time. <laughs> <laughs> I get that right? I think you nailed it. Let me try with Ryan, though. <laughs> Let me try with Ryan. Okay. Hey, Ryan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ryan, you're taking a big drink. Yeah, same thing. Uh, <laughs> if you let them shenan once, what are they going to do? I have literally no idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're probably, they're probably going to get into some tomfoolery. <laughs> they're going to shenan again. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, oh! It's a dad joke. I feel like you'd, you you would have locked on that one pretty quick. <laughs> I did I did the next level dad joke. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, you you dadded up on me there. <laughs> um, welcome to Shenanigans, where we talk about what game devs are doing in their personal lives. Uh, Joel. What are some shenanigans you've been up to lately, man? 
I read this in the diary. I'm like, you guys, how do you guys have time to shenan? Like, you're <laughs> really doing some shenan? Yeah. Startup life, like, oh my God, it's chaos. Um, what makes it chaos? I feel like startup like <sighs> life like counts as a shenanigan. Yeah, that is the <laughs> shenanigan. Yeah. Constant sh- sh- tr- tr- tragic shenanigans now. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, you saw me like like the second that we stopped rolling, I was like answering. Yeah. <laughs> Slag. <laughs> No, it, it is all good. Like, uh, I work from home. So, yeah, my life is is shenanigans at home. Uh, last week, we had a big release on Tuesday. So, that was a big deal. Right on. That day, I'm deploying code. Yeah. Right? Um, I lit a candle. I like having candles lit in my oh, home office. Love it. Yeah, it was on the back of my secret lab desk. Okay. Uh, maybe I can take a picture and you can share it on the thing. But um, I went to grab my switch and it was dead. Yeah. So, I'm like, I got to plug this thing in. So, I flipped the back of the desk up. Forgot about the candle. Oh. <laughs> candle just goes flying. <laughs> Splatters. And uh, it's a bright red candle. Yeah. And, and there's carpet in the in oh, my no. office. The just, wax is so hard to clean out of carpet. It's <laughs> awful. So tra- tragic shenanigans. Um, it looked like a crime scene. <laughs> um, I'll send you the picture. You guys can show, yeah, show, yeah. show the picture. Yeah. Show the picture right now. Yeah, um, I swear, I swear it was a candle. Nobody was, nobody was murdered <laughs> in the space. So that's that's classic right there. Love that. Yeah, it's still, it's a little bit pink now. The, I, I the get, carpet. Yeah, I did get most of the the wax up. Yeah. What color is the carpet? It's like a tan, like a light light oh, tan. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Christmas candle though, so it's. Why are you burning not, a Christmas candle not, in October? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Whatever candle I could grab. <laughs> Mariah Carey isn't even unfrosted yet, dude. <laughs> Michael Bublé hand delivers this, <laughs> this candle to me. <laughs> it is spooky season, motherfucker. We are not doing Christmas right now. <laughs> Orange would have been better. For yeah. Sure, for sure. So that's my shenanigans. I was also at uh, Startup Sensi Week this week. I missed you, though. Same I, I was only there on Monday. Yeah. So um, tell me about your time. Yeah. I missed. So Startup, Startup, uh, Startup Sensi Week was this week. For those that don't know, it's a week every year in Cincinnati where a bunch of startups get together, talk about being startup y and what everyone's working on. A bunch of investors come in and there's like pitches and happy hours and you know, it's it's pretty exhausting, honestly. Um, I had a panel on Tuesday, Glenn and I, uh, talking about how game studios are startups. Um, I specifically focused on sort of the financial modeling, right? Like like so with Guiley, we our initial raise with, was uh, an equity capital raise, very similar to like any other tech startup. Um, and then we finance all of our games with project financing, which is much more like Hollywood. So um, kind of teaching people sort of that that approach. It's a, it's a pretty unique approach. There's not a lot of people that do it that way. So um, that was good. It was a great talk. And then I DJed yesterday. I DJed. Uh, the there was like a lunch thing. I did a bunch of d- a deep house set, and then I DJed the the uh, the final happy hour. Party. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. So where where was the, the was it in Union Hall? Uh, Washington Park. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It That's was good. cool. It was, chill. it was like a beautiful day too. It was like perfect for it. So it was like outdoor outdoor um, uh, event. Man, love that. Which was sorry nice. to have missed it. Yeah, it's all I right. Mi- I missed you. I missed uh, Donnie Jones and Jake Browning. Yeah. Some football yeah. players, yeah. Some football players, yep. But I did, I did get to see the CEO of Skyline talk, so that was cool. Oh. All right, was cool. the heavy yeah. hitter. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 um, Skyline kids meal time outside. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a little chilly. <laughs> I walked right into that one. <laughs> you should start a dad brand, Chris. You know, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I have enough brands as it is, man. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need anything else. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, start start of Cincy Week was great. Wait, before you said I could cut anything I want. Um, I think the, I genuinely laughed a little at that. The, the <laughs> little chili if, you could, if you could cut that, no, I'll strike it's, that from the it's record. It's going to ruin my street cred. <laughs> um, other shenanigan, shenanigan that I got into this week that was uh, actually like really fun. We were talking about like wholesome stuff earlier. Um, I ended up at a uh, Uncle Leo's, which is a. Uh, um, a bar that we have a game named after, actually. Mm-hmm. We have a project uh, name for one of our games named after nice. called Project Leo. Uh, and ran into some some friends there. And apparently there was, uh, la- this was last night, there was a um, a bartender Pinewood Derby. 
that happened. So a bunch of different- Uncle Leo's thing. <laughs> I know, right? Well, they had it at Alice. Okay. So um, it's uh, so Pinewood Derby is mostly Boy Scouts. Yeah. Right? They uh, carve, you know, out of blocks of wood, these little cars and goes down a little hill. So all the local bars in our neighborhood competed in a Pinewood Derby last night. That's incredible. That's cool. And it was amazing. And it was all these like, you know, 20, 30 something bar flies for sure. <laughs> uh, getting so excited at a Pinewood Derby. It was the best. They're exciting. Yeah. That's yeah. One of the highlights of my childhood was absolutely <laughs> cleaning up at a Pinewood Derby. You, I Mine destroyed. Really? Yeah. What was the secret? Um, we got right up to the weight limit. And we Got made to. sure that the yeah. axles were really, really like slippery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was going to say lubed, but I felt weird about that. But then you said it right anyway. Still got it anyway. That's good. That's good. I'm glad we got that. That's cool. Was there like a, a shoutcaster? Was there a, an announcer? Hyping oh, up? yeah, for sure. There was a yeah. host. Yeah, doing yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, it was great. And was it project, on the dance floor? Like where in Alice yeah, was in it? Yeah, it was like in the dance floor. But all the lights were on. That place is not. Is, is pretty icky when all the lights are on in the nightclub. <laughs> it's yeah. not, not the best. I'm going to clean out the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> but Christian, who, who did Project Leo's uh, derby car, just put like a bunch of pieces of rebar in there and then put nice. a cardboard thing around it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cheated? Uh, well, there wasn't like really rules okay. that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got second place. Tokyo Kitty got first. Shout out Jacob. Um but it was a ton of fun, man. It was, cool. it was like way more fun than uh, I thought it was going to be. So it was great. Yeah, it was good. That's hype. That's cool. Rye guy, what, what shenanigans have you been up to, buddy? <sighs> well, first off, I've never done a shenanigan in my life. I but um, I, some activities I've been up to. Um, I tried out. You do, you fucking hate the word shenanigan. <laughs> it's not. It's not my favorite. It's not, it's not my brand. <laughs> you can use tomfoolery. It's okay. <laughs> That's the main reason I use it at this point. Oh, I can tell. Is because of how much you fucking hate that word. <laughs> um, I tried out a new app for just like growing your friend group, where they like you submit a um, quick bio, and then they match you with five other people, and they book a dinner in town, Whoa. and just like you all just like show up at the dinner. Yeah. I haven't been to the thing yet it's it's happening on wednesday okay but, um Ooh, you're gonna have to do a guest spot next week to follow up okay yeah i'll have to i'll have to let you know how it goes yeah. but um that seems cool because it's like you get to a certain point and it's like i love my friend group but a little sick of them like when well, I, just when, diversity want to expand it a little bit yeah it's like you That's you're cool. your only friends come through like work and the few bars you go through and, and yeah. stuff at a certain point it's like where do i where do i meet new people yeah to hang out with i want to try so, it out so what's it, the algorithm for finding those five I'm curious, like, the, the, they have a questionnaire, and I don't know how big the pool of people is, so I don't really know how well they're actually able to cater it according to the questionnaire, but it's all kinds of stuff about, like, are you spiritual, are you political, you know, stuff where, like, I'm guessing just trying to filter out the people you wouldn't want to get stuck in a long conversation with. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, apparently, the way it works is they, the app, they book, they reserve a table at a restaurant, and then at the end of the dinner, they reveal through the app a bar that all the groups that were out that night are all going to go to. So you you, you go like with your group of five and then oh, you meet all the other people. Oh, that's fucking cool. Out. Yeah, it's What's a really the name cool of the concept. App? It's called Time Left. Okay. Yeah, so I don't Time know. I'll, I'll report back, but I'm excited to see Time left. if I meet anybody fun. Yeah, let me know how it goes. I will. I'm not going to sign up till after you get back. But yeah. yeah, I'll be the guinea pig. <laughs> I'm tempted to sign up like right now so I can try to get in your group. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you guys being all social. I'm tempted to like never sign up for that ever. <laughs> <laughs> like I would have uh, when I was younger, but yeah. Yeah. You don't like going out? Well, you live you live in the the burbs. Uh, yeah, I do. I live up north. Um, Burb life. That's all right though. I don't mind going out. I'll go out. All right, I'll go out. But, uh, yeah, it's like a lot <laughs> I don't, of. That doesn't sound very of, convincing. A lot of family stuff. A lot of you family stuff. You the Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I yeah, I can I can drive down here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about driving down. It's the driving back that yeah. scares me. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, all that buffalo sauce. All that buffalo sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joel, you yeah. have a vast audience, and they often need recommendations Ooh. from our uh, gaming Echoes. experts, sure, and social media experts. Do you have any recommendations for our audience uh, today? I have I have so many. At any given time, I am reading a nonfiction book. I'm reading a fiction book. I always uh, do that both at the same time. And then I do um, uh, one game. Weird flex. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. Yep. And then uh, one one game, one big story driven game at a time. Yeah. In addition to like online ones and stuff. And then one TV show. And right now, like all of them are excellent. Hell yeah. Fill yeah. us in. We got yeah. all day. All right. Uh, nonfiction Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Oh, it's so good. It's just so good. Are you a sneakerhead? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I, not huge into like brands. Like my okay. kids are always like, you're not even like into brands. Why do you like Nike so much? Yeah. I do like Nike. Like, it's such a good it's... story, man. And don't spoil it for me. Oh. I'm, on... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on the blue ribbon days, but man, he's like, the way he t- he's a very good storyteller. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it the story of like the founding of Nike? Or... Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And it's so good. I expected it to be good, exceeding expectations. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, game. Uh, obsessed Ghosts of Tsushima. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't stop playing. It's, Are you excited for the sequel? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I mean, I gotta, no spoilers on that either. I gotta, I would love to look into like details about the sequel, mm-hmm. but I can't because I just gotta finish this one first. Right on. Know? But I am excited, yeah. Um, I can't stop. Can you, you say know. what it is real quick? Ghost of Tsushima for people that may not know. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, Open world, uh, samurai, Japanese samurai, uh, very character-driven, story-driven, um, dead dad story. Yeah. <laughs> Conflict of, uh, you know, fulfilling your um, spiritual and uh, honor code of obligations as a samurai versus, you know, doing what you got to do to survive. Uh, Mongols have infiltrated the island of Tsushima and you got to, you know, uh, liberate. Love it. Yeah. Are you playing on PlayStation or PC? P- PS5. Yeah. PS5. Mm-hmm. Right on. Yeah. Cool. I love it. I love it. I mean, I like I said, Bre- I mentioned Breath of the Wild earlier. Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. Love those games. Yeah. Um, to me, this does what those games do really well that I love really well about those games. Yeah. But then it actually has a really good story. Yeah. Dialogue. All that stuff. Right on. Even just like sound design. It's just oh, yeah. 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 Big fan. Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch? No. Yes? Yes. I don't know why I blanked on that. That was weird. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> uh, great team. Great, like, like incredible team uh, making those games. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So good. And then I was going to mention uh, Jason Schreier book, Press Reset. Yeah. Uh, just reading about the gaming industry. It was a great book. Um, behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. I know he's got a new book out. Yeah, I'm um, reading it now. That was my recommendation. Do it. Um yeah, so play nice by Jason Schreier. Also, uh, Jason Schreier. Kind of a fun name, to, fun name to say. Uh, which is his book about the founding of Blizzard. Now it's the rise, fall, and resurrection. Rise, fall, and something of Blizzard. Um, just came out Sounds this awesome. week or last week. Uh, you would love it. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Yes. definitely. It is very. I'm already halfway through it. It's, it is very good. And they really get, he really, I mean, he's, for those who may not know, he's one of the most, Marcus, you okay over there? One of the sound panels fell. Oh, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're keeping all those for like, right, hang on, yeah, hang we'll on. do a super cut. <laughs> it's only happened twice so far on camera. Is yeah. it always this one? It's usually that one, <laughs> and then the one in the direct middle. Yeah. So it's always behind the guest, which makes it even <laughs> Yeah, better. that's cool. Yeah. Is that what you're going to clip for social? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so Jason Schreier is uh, just, just, I mean, just like a uh, like a bulldog of a yeah. journalist. And mm. um, I feel like you know everybody. Do you know him? Have you met Jason Schreier? I met him, yeah, I met him once at BlizzCon, funny enough. Mm. Um, this is the most recent BlizzCon. But um, like his, his, I mean, he's just a guy that that really digs to yeah. find the truth, and and so I think he said he interviewed like three hundred or something people for the Blizzard book, and yeah. and mm-hmm. um, I mean, there's a ton of direct quotes from from founding members, and and it just paints like a really fascinating story of like how you know this monolith of a game, World of Warcraft, completely changed. Um, the the company's direction mm-hmm. and uh, yeah fascinating it's really really good really really and I'm a huge Blizzard I mean I go to BlizzCon every time and I'm a huge Blizzard fan so it was fascinating to to get some of the inside scoop on some of that um, yeah I'll pick that up for sure did you read <clears throat> excuse me did you read Press Reset I have it sitting on my shelf but I have not yet okay. read it because I was just going to ask, it strikes me as similar but more stories not just yeah not just, not just one yeah 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 <clears throat> but it's amazing because still 
direct quote people. Yeah. And then I'll mention someone and be like, they declined to the interview yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah. Like, how do you have, even have time to reach out to all these people? This oh, yeah. So it's so much work yeah. in, into those books. It's really impressive. Yeah, it is impressive how much work he, he or how much work he puts in into his writing and his books. And, yeah, and it's you know especially when like it's so easy to just like be some dude on a podcast talking shit about video games. Yeah, and uh, it's so easy. Yeah, yeah. and he Everybody is also do. that. But um, <laughs> does he do that too? Yeah, yeah. He's got a podcast, uh, Triple Click. I think it's on Max Fun. It's really good. Um, uh, That's a good name. But like, even so. You know, putting all that effort into you know, it's a re- he's just he's a real journalist. Like I feel like those are few and far between these days. Yeah, everyone has opinions, but not everyone's like doing the work to find the truth. He mentioned it in his book. I think he used to work for Gawker, actually. Uh, yeah, well, that was Kotaku. He was old. at Kotaku. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so both great books. Those. That's my recommendation for the week, actually. Uh, Rye guy. Uh, perfect for spooky season. Yeah. Um, another horror game. It's usually my go-to recommendation. Uh, Mortuary Assistant came out okay. in 22. It's kind of like a job sim. Like you're working a night shift at an, um, a funeral home. So you're like embalming bodies and stuff. And so even just like the chores you're doing in the course of your job are a little creepy. <laughs> you know, pulling bodies out, putting them on a gurney, doing all the embalming and stuff. But then uh, over the course of a couple of shifts, you realize there's like a demonic presence in the place and you have to survive. And like, it's it's really scary and good. Is it like, a, cool. like what style visual? First person. It? Okay. Yeah. It's just like, like modern first person? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right on. I, I take it as it's like power wash simulator. But taking care of dead people. That's yeah, that's a good place to start with it. And then it just gets terrifying from there. <laughs> yeah, it gets, gets scary. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's very scary. I've been playing it at night and it's it's creeping me out exactly the amount that I want it to. <laughs> I, I do have to that end, I have one more recommendation that's selfish as hell. But I just re-listened to it and it, I'm still pretty proud of it. So I did a Halloween, I try to do a Halloween mix every year. Uh live DJ set of a Halloween mix. And I did one like last year or year before. I don't know. Um, but it was, it, I listened to it on the way home from Kings Island uh, the other day and it, it holds up. So um, I'm going to make Marcus put that in the show notes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, listen to my Halloween mix. I'm going to do that. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. please do. Yeah. Um, Joel, where can people follow you? And is there anything in particular you'd like to plug? I'm sure Channel 3 might be a part of that. Heck yeah, yeah, channel3.gg. That's where you can follow me. Love it. No, I'm on, I'm on all the platforms. Just look for Joel Willis the Joel, or the Joel Willis. Um, but who cares about that? Channel3.gg. Go there, go. sign up. To your point about it being like kind of a retro feel. Yeah. If you create an account on Channel 3, you will automatically follow me just like Tom from MySpace. Is that the only reason you started this company? I just wanted followers, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> they won't, it won't always be that way, but for right now, it's like setting the that's terms. That's fun, yeah, of course. Yeah, so go create an account on channel3.gg, then you'll follow me. Sign up for yeah. Turbo. Sign up for Turbo. Right. Um, God, what else do we have to Tell play? your friends. Um, we're doing a youth sports league. Okay. For City of Cincinnati this fall at uh, Cincinnati Rec Center. So there's eight different sites. Playing Super Smash Bros. Yeah. Each site's gonna have at least one team. They're gonna have like coaches and practice schedules, and then we're gonna have a regular season. And then we're gonna do the finals at 1819 Innovation Hub. Wow. Um, and then all that stuff will be powered by Channel 3. So, you know, all the team management, uh, player info, gamer tags, all that stuff will all be on Channel 3. Um, the schedules, the brackets, you know, double limit, like whatever, all that stuff, the records, the data, all of it, all on Channel 3. So, love that. That's yeah. awesome. That sounds to me like a pretty significant user acquisition model. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, definitely. That's a byproduct of it. Right, right. That's not the... Not no, the that's not the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I went into business mode. My bad. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> absolutely, though. That's right. I, I believe in that stuff so much. I'm also... Um, uh, there's, there's a woman in town. Uh, she's a librarian at um, Cincinnati Library. Her name yeah. is Kalani Parks. She's starting a nonprofit, and I'm going to be on the board of that. And it's all about just exposing opportunities in the gaming industry to, to youth in our city. And no kidding. I love that kind of stuff. Happy cool. to help with that, man. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, let me know. Appreciate awesome. it. Right, the yeah. name sounds familiar. So she goes by Key. Into, okay, I don't know if I she, ran into Yeah, she's her. awesome. Like, she helped out with Esports Saturdays. And, yeah. Um, they did a, a, like a Smash uh, 
club sort of thing yeah, over yeah, the yeah. summer for Weston True Gamers. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they do good work. There's all this stuff happening that like you don't even know about, like yeah. especially with like younger kids and stuff. It's, it's cool that it's happening. Yeah, and I, I totally feel that way. I know that there's a lot of like gaming leagues, gaming clubs, and stuff like that. Yeah, I just feel strongly they need to be made more mainstream, more accessible. Absolutely, doing it through CRC I think is great, and the CRC team is amazing. Shout yeah. out to Joe Berta. I'm working with a guy named Joe Berta. He's leading it up. Yeah, um, so great. I mean, I played in a a kickball league in college. Yeah. And it was so fun, right? Yeah. It's like, we should have that for like, at least like four or five different video games. For sure. For Absolutely. kids, for adults, oh, like yeah. beer leagues, like that kind of stuff. Like yeah. Yeah, I did, I did uh, Warzone beer league for quite some time. That's cool. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, substitute Kim. I'm good. There it is. <laughs> you see me out in the street, come say hey, but I'm not trying to engage with anybody online. You, I care about that because like you're pretty recognizable. I mean, people already do. Yeah. Hey, you're that guy. Hey, well, I told you I had a guy ask if I would come to his kid's birthday party one time, right? That's weird. Purely because I have a prosthetic arm. I was yeah. like, what, what's, what do I do? You want me to drop stuff? Like, yeah. <laughs> what's my act? <laughs> so substitute Kim. Don't follow, don't follow substitute Kim, right? Don't follow no. substitute Kim or don't. Kim. Cool. Uh, me, follow me uh, at Berg's Makes Games on Insta. Uh, it's kind of the where, I, just pretty much where I live at this point. I don't think there's any, anywhere else online that I'm doing a ton of stuff. Um, and most importantly, please wish list Ra Ra Boom on Steam if you haven't already. Tell all your friends to wish list it on Steam. And uh, with that, uh, Joel, thank you for being here, buddy. Of course. Thank you. Love to finally have you here. Um, you're a good homie and a good friend. And yeah, yeah. any any time. I'm I'll come back, but I won't. Maybe not for like the friendship episode, like like what you did. Who what, who was your first kiss? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all have a great week. <laughs> that was a good ending. Bye. Bye. Bye.